In Parliament's reception room, a state luncheon is in progress in honour of the VCs of the late war. In his reply to the toasts, thoughtful praise for his comrades and for the leadership of the division was given by Captain Upham, the third VC and bar in history. To people in Parliament, he said, be practical in your thanks. VCs, MPs and guests assemble on the steps of Parliament for group photographs. Captain Upham chats with the Honourable Walter Nash, whilst ordeal by camera is faced by Sergeant Hinton. Amongst the guests is Mr. Hamoera Ngarimo, representing his late son, Lieutenant Moana Nui Akiwa Ngarimo, VC. Also remembered are Sergeant Ward and Flying Officer Trigg, the VCs of the Royal New Zealand Air Force. This is an historic group, and the press photographers have arrived in force. Now for pictures of the VCs on their own. Front rank, Sergeant Hinton, Lieutenant Elliot, Captain Upham and Sergeant Helm of this war, Captain Frickleton and Lieutenant Grant of 1914-18. Rear rank, Colonel Andrew, Major Judson, Private Crichton, Lieutenant Laurent and Lieutenant Colonel Bassett. It's a big group for a small country. Soon cabinet ministers and schoolgirls are competing in a rush for autographs. All New Zealand surviving VCs of the recent war are present and the signatures will commemorate this day when they all met. For the first time since 1940, motor vehicles for civilian use arrive in New Zealand. All crated up, but otherwise ready to drive away, the arrival of these British cars provides striking evidence of how rapidly British industry is switching from wartime production to the fulfilment of peacetime requirements. In the motor car field, anyhow, and a very important one it is too, it certainly looks as though Britain has got a good start in the competitive drive for export markets. Wellington's Chinese community gather at Karori Park to celebrate China's National Day. 34 years ago, the Chinese people revolted against the reactionary Manchu dynasty and founded the Republic. Their leader was Dr. Sun Yat-sen, and his name is revered by the Chinese wherever they may be. Speakers remind the people of their compatriots' long struggle against the Japanese. China has paid a heavy price for her right to be free from foreign domination. But today is a day to rejoice and relax. The Chinese are a hard-working folk, and when they do have a holiday, they put everything into it. The enduring spirit of an ancient people is carried on in their youth. Their people's future belongs to them. The RNZAF have spent four years in the Pacific, chasing the Japs, patrolling, sweating it out. They've been fighting a war with Japs, with heat, with mosses, without hangars and often short of equipment. They've assembled planes out in the coral airstrips, and then they've had to fight rain and dust and mildew and sheer boredom. They've helped chase the Japs out of the Pacific and helped to beat them. They've ripped up the sky from the sea to the Philippines. And now, it's all over. It's all over. They're on the Wahine and she's headed for home. They're in the Hauraki Gulf and it's cool and clear. There are people on shore whom they know. There are houses and streets and shops and pubs. 
and there's wives and kids. This is home. Roy Stevens of Auckland enters the ring at Petoni to challenge Boz Murphy for a £200 purse. It's a fine day and a crowd of 4,000 are here to see the fun. Murphy's in the white gown and Stevens in the black. And here we go. First honours go to Murphy, who jabs a rapier-like left to Stevens' chin, followed swiftly by two more. But the Aucklander wastes no time and with a neat uppercut has Murphy thinking. Murphy tries to contact with a straight left, but Stevens' defence is too good. It can't be long before the end of the round. And there goes the gong. Stevens becomes aggressive and pressing the attack home drives Murphy back with solid snappy lefts. As the contest draws to a close, Murphy doesn't hesitate to give ground and so lead his opponent on. Stevens throws in all he has, trying to deliver a knockout blow. But Murphy's defense tactics are too good. Stevens shows that there's nothing crude about his boxing, and his snappy style will take him a long way. Although giving a stone to Stevens, Murphy proves a faster and more dangerous opponent. By brilliant footwork and a natural canniness, Murphy is able to keep Stevens at bay, and so pull off the contest on a points decision. <laughs>